Hey, good morning, Morning Star, and all of our friends, family members. Good to see you this morning. Uh, we are blessed and highly favored yet again to be certainly in the presence of the Lord. Uh, thank you all for jumping on this morning. Uh, we're looking forward to a good time in the Lord once again. Um, we're going to get ready to give some announcements here very shortly. We're going to start with a word of prayer. I see a, still a couple of people still joining in, which is great. Uh, we'll start with a word of prayer. And um, I do see my uh, father in the ministry on, Pastor Thurman. Uh, so make sure you are ready to give us an altar prayer here in a second. Uh, I will let you know when we are ready for you, Pastor Charles Thurman, uh, but we will allow him to do an altar prayer. Uh, I do have a guest here with me this morning, Deacon Harvey Williams from Silver Rain Missionary Baptist Church, who happens to be my father-in-law as well. So we are going to uh, let him uh, start us off in prayer this morning. Deacon Williams. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you, Father, for another day that you have blessed us with. And Father, as we go through this day, we just pray that you will lead us and guide us in the paths of righteousness. Father in heaven, and just help us to do the right thing as we go from day to day. Father, we come this morning just praying for our country, praying for our leaders, Father, that we all would do better. Yes, Lord. And that we'll do the thing that's pleasing in your sight. Father, if we come this morning, we praying for the word this morning, that we will hear a word that would do us good as we go across next week. Yes, Lord. Father in heaven, and for this problem that we are having, we just pray that you will put your hands on all the peoples. Keep a head around us, Father. Yes, God. That no harm will come our way. And Father in heaven, we just pray that you will bless Reverend Brewer this morning and bless his family and his church family. We just pray, Father, that you will be with them and stand by them and just let them keep preaching the word and keep putting the word out to the people so that they may be receive them and live their by. Yes. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have done for us because we know that you've been a mighty good God. And Father, we know that there's been times that we have come short of what we should do. Yes. So Father, we just pray that you will forgive us for our sin. Father in heaven, and just strengthen us and build us up for we're torn down. Yes, we Lord. just pray, Father, that you would be with us and stand by us and lead us and guide us in the past of righteousness. These blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you, Deacon Williams, for opening us up in prayer. Um, we are, again, blessed to be in your presence again this morning. Um, and so blessed that you guys took time to join us in our online worship this morning. Uh, God is certainly a good God and he is worthy uh, to be praised. And I just feel like any type of way we can praise him and worship him, uh, God will certainly honor that. Um, let's see here. We're going to make a couple of announcements uh, and then we're gonna pass it on over to a couple of people that's going to be giving us a few words this morning. I uh, want to remind everybody as you're looking at the uh, the numbers that are spiking in our area, um, even some counties have the requirement now via executive order by our governor to uh, mandatory wear face mask. Uh, I encourage everybody to wear face mask no matter what county you're in. Uh, we are a rural state, so we cross counties. Uh, some people go to work in other counties while living in other counties. So I encourage, even though it's not an executive order um, by the uh, governor that all counties would wear a mask, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, everybody, let's stay safe. Let's keep each other safe. Uh, remember, let's wash our hands often. Um, uh, Sister Shante Cowles told us a few weeks ago, about a month ago, to make sure that we were wiping our cell phones down. So those little things, uh, I'm seeing that some people are actually getting COVID-19 and they're uh, trying to be as safe as possible. So uh, it is a very resilient virus, um, whether it be your cell phone or whatever it is, let's just make sure that we are extra careful uh, and we are doing those things that we can to protect one another. Uh, I want you to pray for all of those during this worship service. 
Uh, pray for all of those who are experiencing illness, uh, particularly the ones who have um, contracted the, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, there are some that are, you know, we've witnessed over the last couple of months that we know and we know well that have gotten the coronavirus. So let's continue to pray for them and lift them up uh, that God would heal them. Uh, I do have some good news uh, in the midst of that. Not so good news. Uh, I announced to you, I don't know if it was last week or Wednesday, but I did announce that Zoom is uh, requiring us to add an extra step of security uh, via a password in addition to your meeting ID. The good news is Zoom has held off on that. So we will not have to put in that extra security as of right now. They are holding off on that for a couple of months. So just disregard uh, having to put in that extra security code. Uh, when that time comes that we will have to put in the extra security code in a couple of months, I will notify you of that. So that's some good news as well. Um, Sunday school, we're going to be uh, having Sunday school this coming Wednesday. Uh, of course, for our Bible study at 630, we do welcome you to join us at 630. We will be reviewing uh, the Sunday school lesson for the upcoming Sunday. Uh, for those who do not have a Sunday school book, I'm going to go ahead and give you that topic uh, for the next Sunday school lesson. And that topic is wisdom that astounds and offends. Wisdom that astounds and offends. Wisdom that astounds and offends. The printed passage will be Mark, the sixth chapter, verses one through six. Mark, the sixth chapter, verses one through six. The key verse is going to be two key verses. It's going to be Mark, the sixth chapter, verse number two and verse number three. Mark, the sixth chapter, verse number two and verse number three. So let us make sure that uh, if your schedule permits that you join us this Wednesday night at 630 as we go over our Sunday school lesson for next week. Uh, on next Sunday, third Sunday, July the 19th, we will not have online worship service. Uh, we'll take a little bit of a break next Sunday, July the 19th. There will be no online worship service. I will send a, a, a message out about that so that you'll know. So we'll be off Sunday as well as that following Wednesday. So the 19th and the 22nd for Wednesday night Bible study. And then we'll return back on fourth Sunday, July the 26th. When we do return, we're going to be having virtual communion on fourth Sunday, July the 26th. So no service on Sunday, July the 19th or Wednesday, July the 22nd. But we will be returning July the 26th for our online worship and communion service. Um, for today, we have a, a couple of different people who are going to give us a few words. Uh, first, we will be hearing from Sister Joyce Brewer. Uh, she's going to be speaking on behalf of the mission. Um, and uh, they want to give us a couple of announcements regarding the, we would typically be having a blood drive during this time, during this month. Uh, but they want to give you a couple of announcements on how we're going to go about uh, donating blood for those who can do so. Uh, after that, we're going to hear from Deacon Robert Smith. Uh, he will be speaking to us from the perspective of uh, the manufacturing industry and how COVID has affected the manufacturing industry and some tips that he may want to give us, some of the uh, precautions that they have been taking in the manufacturing uh, industry. Um, after that, we're going to have uh, Brother Reginald Black, I'm sorry, we're gonna have Pastor Charles Thurman uh, to give us an altar prayer. Uh, and after that altar prayer, we'll have Brother Reginald Black to uh, give us a song 
And after that song, we will have the message. Uh, sometime over the next couple of weeks, uh, or when we return, we're going to um, be sharing some slides with you on voter registration, uh, as well as um, disenfranchised crimes. In other words, uh, we want to make sure those people who have had some brushes with the law uh, that they know that some of them still qualify to register to vote. Uh, and that's kind of a, a, a misconception that a lot of people have that uh, any crime that you commit or any misdemeanor, you're automatically uh, discounted from being able to register to vote. So we want to make sure we get all the proper information out so that we can get all of our people registered to vote. Um, okay, so... The first thing, the first person we'll hear from will be Sister Joyce Brewer, and uh, she's going to give us uh, some updates from the mission. So, Sister Joyce Brewer, if you are there, you may take it over now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I see Dina Smith. Uh, I've been at I've been asked this morning um, to give you updates on the blood drive, and um, I can't just say the blood drive. But I need to I need to give you some information on the why. Uh, blood transfusions are very common. A total of 21 million blood components are transfused each year in the United States alone. 21 million units. Some people have insurance that will pay for this blood. Some people have insurance that will not pay for it. And sometimes the hospital will use a trade-off and they'll say, uh, you can repay the hospital two units for the one you received. Some reason that people require blood transfusion could be major surgical procedures. They will have blood transfusion to replace any blood loss during surgery. Blood transfusions are used for patients who have experienced serious injuries from car crashes or natural disasters. Individuals with an illness that causes anemia, such as leukemia or kidney disease, will often be the recipient of blood transfusions. This is not a complete list. Some people even require blood before their surgery can be performed. Some Sickle cell patients require blood transfusions frequently. Beginning July 21st, we will begin donating blood for our church family in Flowood, Mississippi. We will need 25 units. Our group number is D as in dog, J as in Jack, 99. And for extra precaution, please tell them you are donating for Morning Star Baptist Church in Star, Mississippi. We need everybody that donates to be very committed to inform one of the mission members, Sister Maxine Thompson, Sister Linda Morris, Sister Kathleen Cowles, Deacon Glenn Williams, or Brother Charles Thompson. Notify a uh, Joyce Brewer, notify one of us that you have gone to donate. Because in the past, when we have had people to go out and donate, the blood has been given to other people. And this year, we are going to need every one of our units. Once we reach the 25, we'll cover and we won't be we won't be uh running at our units as fast. But as soon as you can donate, and please don't anyone go out there and make a mistake like I did, try to donate before the 21st because it would not be counted for this year. We start the 21st and we, we will be covered through the 21st of 2021. And um, get together, two or three people, go out there, wear your mask, make, make sure you Dana, that they, they sanitize everything, you're going to be safe to go out there and donate. So let's do that, and the faster we get it done, the uh, then we can we can relax from this. But we did not, we, we decided, uh, initially we were going to have it at the church, but we don't know what who has. Some people might be carrying a virus, and they're not 
showing any symptoms and we did not want them to go use our bathroom facilities and then somebody has to go in there and sanitize behind them. So we decided to go out to the blood service and do everything out there and it can be done that way. We just have to be very careful with our numbers and make sure when you tell one of the mission members that you donated, give them your contact number because in all likelihood they're going to say that you didn't donate. So we're going to have to call you back and they will not allow us to tell them you donated. You will have to call them and tell them I donated under DJ99. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all uh, from the mission. Uh, if you need any follow-up information regarding uh, donating blood and uh, kind of the way we're doing the blood uh, this year, again, uh, just reiterating that we will not be having a physical blood drive at the church as we typically do. Uh, however, there are still uh, units of blood that um, uh, we need to be donated. Uh, if you feel good about going up there, we're not forcing you to, but if you feel good and safe, prayed up. Uh, go ahead and put your mask on. They're taking every precaution at the blood services. And beginning July the 21st, uh, that's when we would actually be getting credited uh, for donating blood. So again, thank you to Sister Joyce Brewer. Thank you, Sister Maxine Thompson and the mission. Um, we appreciate that. If there's any follow-up, we will get with you guys. Okay, next we're going to have uh, Deacon Robert Smith. Oh, Maxine, I see you put a little clap emoji up there. Boy, y'all are really getting good at this Zoom thing. <laughs> All right, sister, uh, we got uh, Deacon Robert Smith, uh, who's going to come on and give us a few words from a manufacturing perspective uh, and some of the precautions they're taking and how it has kind of affected their industry somewhat. So, Deacon Smith, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Okay. I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. He's on the video. First of all, you'll thank God for this opportunity. And uh the back and and the end um my work place right now. I'm just gonna tell you a few things about what's going on up there and how we um trying to keep ourselves protected from this virus. The first thing we do when we get there, you have to get your temperature check. They have uh, nurses on first shift, and they have nurses on second shift. They bees in. And they bees in the gold. Station. So when you first walk through the door, they have a little spot, crawls there, that you have to test in, and they take the temperature. They have a glass shield, and the nerves be behind the glass shield, but they have a little hole cut in the glass for this temperature check thing. Get your forehead and check the temperature. And if you have a temperature, you will come around to the first aid book and we'll reach it to make sure whether you have the temperature or not. And, and if you have a temperature, if you have a temperature, then you have to leave. Mm. So go see a doctor, and you get to get checked for the corona. Once you've been checked, if you don't have error, you're going to have to 14 days. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's just what people. We, um, we had one guy over there where I was at. He came in one morning at 5 o'clock. He was sick. He knew he was sick. He knew he shouldn't have should came. Mm -hmm. He had a fever of 102. Mm -hmm. But once they checked him, they took him in the first day and they rechecked him. Well, he had, to, he had to leave and go back home and go to the doctor. Once he got sick, he had the coronavirus. And he had to go those 14 days. But another co-worker, of course, he was wearing a mask the whole time. He was having uh, severe headaches. So, and he went to the doctor. 
and he tested positive for the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. If you test positive, you have to be off 21 days. Mm -hmm. And you can't come back until the doctor clears you. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, after 20 days, they are able to come back to work. So as of right now, we done had about three people in the plant that tested positive mm -hmm. for the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. They bees off a total of 21 days. Mm -hmm. No no one has planned it so, um, with the virus. They had their symptoms, but they went to that some people. Mm -hmm. They get to see you got to be off the whole 21 days. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that the company paid for being off. I don't know exactly how they pay you. Will they pay you your whole salary or will they just be two thirds? But they do pay you while you. And then once we get to our workstation, they do want somebody to stay be the fourth. Some jobs, like on the land or uh, where people work at, those people cannot be six feet of fourth mm -hmm. because. They got to they got to pull up working on the unit together, but kind of sort of store you mm -hmm. So if the supervisor six people working together, we will come get on them. And if they don't have it, then they are gonna have to go and get one before they can keep. And. One of the things that we have to do when we get there, and this is mandatory as well, they have um, different tests that we keep involved. We have to keep those bottles filled. When they when we empty them, we have to go and refill them for the next year. Mm -hmm. But what we have to do, we have to spray everything down with just disinfectant before we start work. So they give you 15 minutes to spray everything down. What so happened that I have a great big tube up. So what I should lock up all my tubes every day. <laughs> but still, it's best to spray everything down. Mm -hmm. And then after you done sprayed everything down, then you can go to work. Now everybody over there watching the cat, use this we have a crane that we use. And me, myself, I even spray the crane knob down. I spray them down as well. Yeah. I have a chair that's sitting by my workstation. So when I go on break, I can sit in because I stand the whole day. So I spray my chair down every day. Because you got people on night shift that, that definitely be wanting to cheer out. <laughs> so after we, after we quit in the evening time, we have to do the same thing. You got to spray down everything. Mm -hmm. It takes 15 minutes to clean it up and spray everything down. And of course, everybody is not doing that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times the supervisor will be up there to watch you to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to. That's just one of the ways that this virus has, has uh, affected the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to talk about the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. We go up to the cafeteria and break. Before the virus started, you know, the lady would hang up. Great, eggs, sausage, you know, <laughs> biscuits, toast, whatever you wanted in a container, and you have to grab the utensils and get what you want. Mm -hmm. All that's out. That's out. So, what she does, when you go up there, she already has the food fixed in the container. Mm -hmm. So no one can be touched in your temple. If you want egg and sausage, I mean, uh, egg and sausage, yeah, egg and sausage, she already got them in a container. Mm -hmm. If you want grit, which I love grit, and I, I just more than what I supposed to have got, but now they be in a little bit of um, foam cook, and the cup don't be full. <laughs> <laughs> and used to when I went up there, I put out. It didn't matter whether you got a lot of grit or if you just got a few, it was going to be the same price. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just getting a few. Grits. <laughs> but everything is fixed for purpose. Uh -huh. But people that 
don't take their lunch. I take mine every day, but people that don't take their lunch, when you go up there to get your lunch, it's already in bags. It's already fixed. You just grab and see how signs up there telling you what's in the bags. You grab what you, you pay for it and you go on and sit at the table. When you get to the table, they got my ways of set up and that's for people that want them. Me, I always sit at the booth. For the booth, for four, four people, now only one person can sit at the booth. Just one. Mm-hmm. So they have to take off. And of course, sometimes people pull the tape off, but still, only one person can sit at sit the booth instead of four. They have tables there. Instead of people, like it used to be, sit at the table. Only four people can sit at the table. They have um, these secret places going a long way, and they got them all the way across the table. So they see four people can sit at the table and no more. And then the wine, mm-hmm. which is what I do. Um, the winders don't have to wear a mask unless someone walks up and starts talking to them. Mm-hmm. Most of the guys, their machine is, is down low. The machine that I run kind of sits up high. you got to walk up on a platform. And which right now is, is, is good for me. Um, if I work up on a platform, mine is higher than anyone else has been there. Mm-hmm. But still, they said that the winders don't have to wear a mask since we work alone. But you don't have to wear a mask unless someone walks up. Mm-hmm. And we know that just bogged up. I mean, every mask that's right, they keep glass bogged up. Still, mm-hmm. I still have to wear the mask. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I do take it down, but I keep it on my face, but I take it down so I can't breathe a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But if somebody walks up, it don't matter whether they have a base or mask on or not. You got to put your mask on. Mm-hmm. And after the work day is over, mm-hmm. they got blue sprite tape. They got blue tape on the floor. They want everybody to stay at least six feet apart. I don't know why, but we just don't do what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Right. We're supposed to stay six feet apart going to the time clock. Uh-huh. They have a time on both sides of the wall. Going out, people don't do what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Stay six feet apart. It's about everybody on the uh, person in front of them here because they're in such a big area to get out. Mm-hmm. And then, in the morning time, uh, it's just to get this to the third. Me and myself, I'm always at the left of the circle. Most of the time, I go in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I go in at 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, about the last two, or two, I've been going in at 3 o'clock in the morning. And when I come in at 3 o'clock, the nurse is not there. The nurse don't come in at 4.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. When the nurse comes in at 4.30, you can stop what you're doing and go up and get the temperature check. Mm-hmm. But they don't want nobody in that plant. They said a temperature mm-hmm. for one. It's whether you are salary or whether you are hours. Everybody, they got to get their temperature check. Mm-hmm. If you go outside on your break, like a lot of them do, when, when you come back in, you still got to get your temperature checked. Mm-hmm. I'm saying when people out there sitting in their cars from birth, your body temperature goes up because it's so hot. Well, you, you're going to have to stay in the first day before the temperature comes down. Once your temperature comes down, then you can come back to work. Mm-hmm. The COVID-19 has affected the manufacturing jobs in a lot of different ways. 
Another way is some equity job is a lot of times we run short of ports. Um, even though we do a lot of our overtime, we see a run short of ports. Um, sometimes it takes us more from 30 minutes to some jobs that take about an hour and a half to set up before you can start doing that job. And why they don't ever check uh, a lot of times, but sometimes you can set up the job and be ready to work. And next thing you know, here they come, here comes the come supervisor saying, we out of this, we out of paper, or we out of wire, or we out of aluminum. So that's all we were short. And then you got to turn around and you got to turn back down and sit up on something else and run something else. Mm-hmm. But when that, the port shortage, the other port you were short of, when it becomes in, then you got to turn back down and sit back up and run up the customer's need. Yeah. But he has an effective job in a lot of different things. And the main thing we have to do is um, try to. That's good. You said on, I think on last week or week before last about um, it's best not to test guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, guys, gonna take care of. Mm-hmm. But we got five cents. Yeah. Right now, it's best for us to wear the mask. Yeah. When you go out to the grocery store and put all this for, I hear what it is. We need to have them. Mm-hmm. We know that. And people can have the COVID-19 and not even. Mm-hmm. <laughs> last week, last Sunday, I had to get another procedure done because I had another diabetic to go. So the first thing the hospital told me was that you got to have a COVID-19 test mm-hmm. before we can even do the procedure. Mm-hmm. So... Me and myself, I kind of fucked with this because I told the doctor, I said, now y'all just did this thing a couple of years ago. <laughs> told me I wasn't going to have this problem anymore. Mm-hmm. But ain't back. So they had to go in and uh, make sure that the fence that they put in was still open where it was halfway closed so they had to open it up. Mm-hmm. But they didn't put in another fence. But he was, though, I had to get a COVID-19 test before I went in. Right. So I did that on Monday. Last month, they got the result. The test was negative. So thank God for that. Mm-hmm. So they went and told me to be so it was third, so they went on and did the uh, test. So that lets me know. If you are, if you got to have some kind of procedure or something done, unless it's real critical, they do it. If you test positive for the COVID-19. Mm-hmm. So the best thing for us to do is like Dr. Burrell said, um, and like Dr. Witt said this morning, don't test God and don't tempt God. Mm-hmm. That's right. Do what you got to do. But we got to do what we got to do to keep ourselves protected. Mm-hmm. Like, like Sister Mo, and I'm, and I'm going to stop, like Sister Monique said um, on last week, mm-hmm. This is my certain service the way I go to my home church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. That's the way it hasn't closed the doors yet. Mm-hmm. But we know that New Ham is a big church, and um, we it normally to be about 20 or 30 something people there. Mm-hmm. But the earth and him himself, they make sure to spread it out. Mm-hmm. We got to do we got to do what we got to do. We may not like it, but we need to do what we got to do. But we make sure everybody spread it out. When you come into the church, you sanitize your hands. Mm-hmm. When you go out of the church, you have to sanitize your hands. And then once they all, uh, once everybody's home, they re-clean the church. Mm-hmm. Nobody goes back in until the next Sunday. Mm-hmm. But he said this morning, he said this morning that um, we have to stay connected to him. Mm-hmm. Right now we're in a bad Waiting with this COVID 19, but we have to be connected to God. Mm-hmm. We know we go out 
we got to associate with people and stuff, with what they did, what they got. Same thing on the job. But we got to do what we got to do. Mm-hmm. But in the main, it's connected to God and let us do what we have to do to protect ourselves and to protect others. Me and my sister, the man, where is the man? Amen. It's because. And I want to protect others as well. If I do have it, or if I do get it, I don't be reason someone else has the virus. Mm-hmm. So let us do it. And I pray God continue to bless and keep every one of us. Okay, God, but that's it. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. God bless you for that. Uh, and we thank you for uh, that insight that you've given us. From the manufacturer's perspective, and it's all you can hear, um, it's, it's real serious. And it's real serious in a lot of places, on the jobs. Uh, it's very serious. So, as Deacon Smith alluded to, let us make sure that we do all the things that uh, we need to do, despite of what other people do, or in spite of what other people do. Let's make sure that we do everything that we're supposed to do to keep each other safe. God bless you and God keep you, Deacon Smith. And we pray your safety uh, every day. We pray that God will protect you every day that you go in and that he would uh, put a hedge of protection around you. Uh, Yes, sir. All right. um, Next, we're going to have a uh, altar prayer for uh, for Pastor Charles Thurman is going to give us an altar prayer. And um, Pastor Thurman is a pastor I accepted my call under. He is my father. Uh, He's visited us a couple of times. And um, we just want him to give us a few words of encouragement uh, as well as an altar prayer, uh, after which we'll have a song by Brother Reginald Black and then um, a few words of encouragement from myself. So, Pastor Thurman, are you there, sir? Good morning, my son. Good morning. What a blessing it is to be with you. Uh, I think I'm a little tech savvy this morning. I have <laughs> on my telephone uh-huh. uh, Mother Wilson and um, the Deacon Carr. Hey, Amen. Amen. And uh, on the, my laptop, so I'm getting a chance to, to look at everybody. But, but what a blessing. It Amen. is to, and I see my baby daughter <laughs> on the show. Amen. Good morning, morning, star. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, in the midst of all of the challenges, and even in this dark place, mm-hmm. uh, we still have joy. Yeah, yeah. Simply because we know that the God that we serve. Mm-hmm. Is still in control. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Just a reminder and a word of encouragement that we celebrate Christmas each year. Mm -hmm. And in Isaiah, it says to us, in spite of the come in the city, the state, and the nation, but the last time I talked with God, government rest on this show. That's the word. That's the word. I just encourage of where we are. Mm-hmm. We are the intent in our wishing, in our walk, and our prayers. Mm-hmm. That word of God speaks that sorrows endure mm-hmm. for night. Yeah, yeah. But the joy comes in. That's right. Let That's us right. Speak, let us be, let us be well, that God has awakened us Yes. Uh, and allowed us to be in this place at this time. Yes. Amen. There is another thing that I'm going to say, and I want to, to pray up. As I listen to the, those who are front line, listen to those who are out there. Yeah. And then I'm seasoned and, and with two, uh, realizing that it is essential that do all the generic things. That, uh, uh, that you're encouraging us to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, the word says to us that it is, it is exciting when the body of Christ 
comes together. I believe that's what David said. I was yeah. glad yeah. that they said it to me. Yeah, yeah. Let us go into the house of prayer. Yeah, yeah. And David understood the dynamics of what the presence of the house. But God did not leave us without an alternative plan. Yes. He says that we're two or three touching mm -hmm. and agreeing upon anything in I'm in the midst. That's it. That's Whenever it. you ask me, you don't have to wonder about it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hear you. Yeah. And answer your prayer. Yeah. The question is, have we really seriously as a believer look at front mm -hmm. when he said, if my people yeah. that are called by my name That's it. will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Yeah. Then will they hear from heaven. Mm -hmm. I will forgive them of their sin. Yeah. And oftentimes we leave out that part. Mm -hmm. I will heal the land. That's it. That's it. Uh, I've not seen where the body of Christ and all of the Christian leaders come together. Mm -hmm. We did it 9-11. Yeah. But I have not seen that kind of impact mm -hmm. where the body of Christ flooded the televisions and radio stations, mm -hmm. going before the Father, seeking forgiveness for the wrongness that have taken place. My Lord. Trust, yes. trust that injustices have been done. My Lord. But we can't sugarcoat and we can't sweep it under the rug. Mm -hmm. We got to confront it and call it by its name. Yeah, yeah. Sin is sin. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he says that, how can you love me and you have never seen mm -hmm. and hate your brother that you walk with daily? That's it. That's it. That there, there is some issues and legislature, mm -hmm. the laws cannot change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has to be a change of heart. My Lord. Right. My Lord. My Lord. Hallelujah. My Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now. Thank you. We Lord. thank you, God, for your word, and we thank you for bringing us to this place and this appointed time. Yes, Lord. God, we come to tell you thank you thank because you, God. we realize you've been so good to us. Yes, Lord. In fact, you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. Oh, hallelujah, God. And we come prostrating our heart before you say, forgive us for our sin. Yes, God. Search our hearts and our minds that we might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Yes, God. Lord, we come confessing that we've done you wrong. Mm. And we come asking that you would forgive us beyond ethnicity, beyond race, beyond creed. And right now. Hope. Right now, God. God, we ask that you touch our sinful hearts because if we are not walking Jesus. in love. Yes, Lord. We are not walking in you. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. God, we pray right now that you would move upon the hearts and minds of leaders from right now, every God. level. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, God, that you would touch and convict, Lord. And we know that you ain't. Yes, God. We know that you allowed us to come to this place mm. because we have walked away from our first love. Yes, Lord. Lord, we are not asking that you take us back to where we were, but we're asking that you would get, make our future far better than our pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, touch you now, Lord. We come this morning to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up and yes, thank you Lord. for clothing us in our right mind. Thank you for the raiments on our body. Yes, thank you for God. shelter Rocky. Hallelujah, God. God, we come telling you thank you for thank our mouth to praise and to worship you. Yes, God. Because even in the midst of where we are, oh yeah, yeah, Lord, there are several pandemics that flow in. That's it, God. We come to tell you thank you. Thank you, God. Then, God, we come to say to you uh, that we need you to referee the storm. Right now, Master. Referee the conversation. Yes, Lord. Bring conviction wherever it needs to be. Oh, yeah. Because for us to have a newness in you, conviction's got to fall. Yes, God. Father, we pray for the pastor. We pray for Bless Pastor Brewer, Lord. We pray Bless for the morning stop. And we pray for every church yeah, door God. 
that is speaking the word of truth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not so much the church door that is open, but the mm -hmm. church that the one accord. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. The church that you have called and have sanctified and redeemed the believers. Yes, Lord. We come to say touch, man. Yes, Lord. Touch in the Father, name of Jesus. we pray for those that are sick and shut in. Yeah, Lord. God, we pray for those that's on the front line. Yes, God. Yes, God. We pray for families. We pray for the seniors. We pray for those that are uh, confined to houses, homes, and nursing Hallelujah, homes God. and hospitals. Hallelujah, God. God, we don't act, we're not asking you to, to walk the halls of the hospital. We yes, know God. that you're already there. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. We pray that you're touched right now. Right now, Master. Because right now. you are still in the healing business. Yes, Lord. Somebody said that you hadn't changed. You're the same as you was yesterday, today, mm. and you'll be the same tomorrow. Yes, God. Touch now, Father. Touch in the name of Give Jesus. Father. Bless right now, God. Then our Father. Yeah, Lord. Then our Father, we pray that if we forgot this morning to place our hearts before you. Yes, God. If we forgot this morning, Father, to place our lips towards heaven. Yes, God. If we forgot to to lift our hands in praise. Yeah, Lord. We come to tell you we love you this morning. Right now, Master. We love you because you brought us from a mighty long way. Yes, you have. Yes, Thank you have. Thank you now, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Thank you for being so kind to us. Thank, Thank you. you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. When we can't come and worship you in this form of even in a corporate sense. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. We got to go reeling and a rocking in the dying room. Yes, Lord. We pray that you hear us and receive us. Yeah, God. We'll be so ever to give you the praise. It's yours, God. We'll be so to give you the glory. Hallelujah. It's in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name Thank of you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. We pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. And we certainly feel the presence of God's Holy Spirit. And it is amazing and awesome that, as Pastor Thurman alluded to, that when two or three of us are touching and agreeing that he is in the midst. We thank God for the presence of his Holy Spirit right now in this place. We're going to ask uh, Brother Reginald Black, if you are there, to give us a song. Brother Reginald Black has been playing for us uh, the last few months and uh, just an anointed young man in the Lord. And we pray that uh, God will continue to bless his ministry. So if Reginald Black is there... Uh, we'll have a word from him, a song from him, and then we will be uh, ready for a word from heaven. There you are. Let me put the spotlight on you. It's Good all morning, yours. Pastor. Good morning. All right, I'm just going to sing a little bit of this song. All right, take your time. It says, Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. Take your time, son. There are times I, I don't understand, but I believe it's turning around for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had struggles. That's it, son. And disappointment. There are times I, I felt so alone, and some of my friends, they, they let me down, Yeah. but I still believe it's turning around for me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Around for me. Around for me. Around for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's turning around for me. Cause I can see the breaking of day. That's it, son. God is making a way. A change is coming for me. If I 
must stand strong and believe. And there's no reason to doubt. Because I know he's working it out. Yeah. And it's turning around for me. And this is my favorite part of the song. Come on, boy. It says, it won't always be <laughs> like this. That's it, son. God will perfect that concerning you. And soon or later, yeah. it's going to turn in my favor. And soon or later, it's going to turn in my favor. Soon or later, it'll turn in our favor. And it's turning around for me. And for you and for your family and for your friends too, it's turning around for me. I'm expecting great things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's turning around for me. Corona won't last always. That's oh, it, son. Yeah. It's turning around for me. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, son. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> what a uh, what a wonderful time in the Lord that uh, we've been having. We've been certainly blessed this morning. Uh, and we're just going to give you a few words this morning. If you have your Bibles... Uh, if you could turn to Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 4, and then verses 8 and 9. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. And uh, if you all don't mind while you're looking for that, uh, or before you find that, uh, we've had such anointed people to, to join us this morning and bless us in song and words of encouragement. Uh, Deacon Smith blessed us uh, with some encouragement. Sister Joyce gave us some insight as to how important uh, the, uh, the blood services are, particularly in this time of Corona. Can you all unmute yourselves for a moment and give all of those people a big round of applause? And then I'll be able to hear you as well. So I like to hear you. Can you guys give them a big round of applause? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Verses 1 through 4. And then we're going to go down to verses 8 and 9. Very familiar passage here. Very familiar passage as we talk about the potter and the clay. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, just for a few moments. Verses 1 through 4. And then we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 4, and then verses 8 and 9. As we look at a little bit of Jeremiah's uh, ministry and his uh, prophecy as he prophesied to the, uh, the people of God, the, the people of Judah. And he tried to really forewarn them of the coming... Uh, the coming Babylonian captivity that would come their way if they dis continued to disobey God. So we want to look at this, Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 4. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels 
One translation says, and he was working on a vessel on the wheels. And the vessel in verse 4 that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. And then verse 8 and 9, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, the doing, and especially uh, the doing of his holy and his divine word. That verse number nine is God is really giving the response to if you respond and turn from your ways after he has shaped you and molded you, he says that he'll build and plant you. In that ninth verse, it says, and at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. For a few moments, I want to speak from this thought. And that thought is potting and planting. Potting and planting. And if I had to give it a subtopic, I may call it something like shape up and ship out. Shape up and ship out. There's a common vernacular that we often use in life that says shape up or ship out. But God is really simply trying to tell us to shape up and ship out because he is preparing us for the ministry that he is calling us to perform. My brothers and my sisters, we are in troubling times. And we must understand that no matter what it is that we go through, God is still potting and planting every day. My brothers and my sisters, you have to understand that once you gave your life to Christ, his desire was not for you to just sit on your hands, but God's desire is that he plants you, builds you up, that you may go and bear even more fruit. My brothers and my sisters, what we must understand and always keep close to our heart is that we have to move from membership and move over to ministry. Now, membership is a good thing. Membership is a good thing. It's great to be a member of a church. I love Baptists through and through. But the fact of the matter is God is trying to move us from membership uh, to discipleship. You understand that he is trying to pot us. He is trying to plant us. He is trying to build us up. And, and I think it's par for the course that Pastor Thurman just said this morning that he's waiting for us to turn from our wicked ways. Then he'll hear from us and he will heal the land. It is God's desire that he pots us and he plants us. He shapes us. Not that we not shaped up that we'll ship out, but he's shaping us up so that we can ship out and do the ministry that he's called us to do. My brothers and my sisters, we have to get beyond uh, just coming to church because our mom and our daddies brought us to church. My brothers and sisters, we have to get beyond the candles in the right place, the offering at the right time, the announcements at the right time. My brothers and sisters, we have to get beyond the four walls and tell a dying world that God is still on the main line and we have to call him up. Listen, God is trying to shape us up, my brothers and sisters, so that he can ship out no longer. Are we worried about membership? As I said, it's good, but God is trying to have some disciples to go out and do the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. 
He's potting. He's planning. He's trying to fertilize our ministries that we may be equipped as the people of God to go out and tell other people that God is still hearing and answering prayers. He's still potting and planning, folks. In our text today, we are hearing from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah was considered a weeping prophet. He, he was so torn on the inside because he really wanted folks in Judah to receive his message. Mm -hmm. And his message was simple. Repent, turn from your ways, and God will heal you. That's enough right there to shout about that even though I was born into sin, even though I would continue to mess up, even though I'm imperfect in the potter's hand, God is still able to forgive me. And I don't know about you today, and, and if you would be honest with yourself, we've all messed up before. We've all come short of the glory of God, but aren't you glad that God is still shaping you up so he can ship you out? Aren't you glad you're not what you used to be, even though you're not all that you will be? God is still working it out. And as Brother Reginald Black said, he's working it out in your favor this morning. Jeremiah was trying to prevent these people of God from being taken into Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. He preached to them. He prophesied to them. He begged them to follow what God was trying to do. And the good thing about God, God was trying to shake them up for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. But just like we are today, we rejected. They rejected God trying to shake them. Mm -hmm. But very quickly today, because I believe I'm already excited about the word of God. I'm already excited about what has come before the word. So I just want to share a few things with you mm -hmm. that will help you to shape up and help you get ready to ship out. First of all, first of all, you got to understand that God is trying to speak to your heart right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is trying to speak to somebody right now. Look at verse number one and number two, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to what? Hear my words. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, God is trying to speak to you mm -hmm. right now. God is trying to tell you what he's calling you to do. But what we have to do is we have to learn how to listen. He gave us two ears and one mouth. Sometimes we just talk too much. Sometimes we're not listening to what God is trying to tell us. And sometimes we want all type of signs when God is just saying, be still and wait a little while. Mm -hmm. Whew. Hallelujah, God. Romans 10 and 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. Listen, the word of God is speaking to you. That's God telling you what it is he wants you to do. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for correction, for reproof, for instructions in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That the man of God may be made whole. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying uh, that if you really want to know what God is trying to tell you, uh, you've got to start getting in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's no debate when it comes to the word of God. God will tell you in his word how to rear your children. God will tell you in your word how to raise your children, how to treat your wife, how to treat your husband, how much you ought to tithe, how church should be formed. It's all right there in the word of God. Mm -hmm. But the question is, are we really listening to him? So number one, if you want to be shaped up, if you want to be potted and planted properly, you got to understand that God is trying to speak to you. Mm -hmm. But not only folks is God trying to speak to you. Secondly, 
God is trying to work on you. Mm. Hey, anybody want to be worked on today? God is trying to work on you. Look, look, look at the text right here in verse three. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. In other words, God is trying to shape you up right now to get you in the place that he needs you to be. Folks, you got to be willing. You got to be willing to let God work on you. You got to be willing to let God put his hands on you. You've got to be willing to let God shape you up into the vessel that he needs you to be. Remember, remember, we're going from membership to discipleship. So in order for that to happen, we got to allow God to work on us. Philippians 2 and 13, the apostle Paul says, for it is good. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hey, so Paul understood that he wasn't where he needed to be, but he needed to allow God to keep working on him. Somebody needs God to keep working on them today. And if you don't admit it, I admit that he needs to keep working on me. Number one, folks, God is trying to speak to you. Open your ears, open your mind, look at the word of God and see what he's saying. Number two, if you want to be shaped up, you got to understand that God is trying to work on you. Not only will he speak, but he's also trying to massage you into the right place. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite point right here. Thirdly, God specializes in imperfect vessels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey! He specializes in imperfect vessels. Look at verse number four. And the vessel that he made of clay, mm -hmm. watch this, was marred in the hand of the potter. But God didn't give up. Look at the B part of four. So he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. In other words, if you want to be shaped up, God will keep working on you. Right. Hey, right. you if know. you want to be right, God will keep working on you. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to be made whole, God will make you whole. Listen, the potter doesn't go anywhere. It's the clay that jumps off the vessel and get out of the, the fellowship of God. Right. Oh, you better catch, you better write that one down right there. The potter is still in the same place. Yeah. It's the vessel that's jumping off the potter wheel. We're the vessel. We're jumping off the wheel. But I stop by to tell you that if you want to be shaped up, you got to stay in place. It's going to hurt sometime. It's going to be hot sometime. But that's the process to get you where God wants you to be. My brothers and sisters, I got to tell you that God is trying to speak to you. Secondly, he's trying to work on you. And thirdly, he specializes in imperfect vessels. We get off track. But Romans 3 and 23, Paul says, for all have sinned. Hey, and come short of the glory of God. You mean grandmama sin? Yes, grandmama sin. You mean mother so and so sin? Yes. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the important part is to get back on the wheel and let God put his hands back on you. <laughs> let him start working you back over and over again. But the last thing is this. Not only is he trying to speak to you through the scriptures and through the spoken word. Not only is he trying to work on you and massage you into place. Right. Not only does he specialize in imperfect vessels. But the last thing is this. God is preparing you right. for your breakthrough. <laughs> hey, yeah. you're not even ready for your breakthrough yet. He's got to massage you. And get you ready for your breakthrough. Look at verse 8 and 9. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil. Pastor Thurman said that earlier. I will repent of that evil that I thought to do unto them. But watch this. He's not done. And at what instant 
I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. Hey, he's preparing you for your breakthrough. But he doesn't want you to go in your breakthrough all raggedy. He want to get you massaged up a little bit. He want to put you on the heat, on the wheel to get you ready for your breakthrough. God is preparing you for your breakthrough. Some of us not ready to have that high salary yet. Because we can't manage the few pennies that we have. Some of us not ready for that, that S-class Mercedes yet. Because we're not even taking care of our hoop the way we shoot them. But God is preparing you. John 15 and 2. God says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it will bear even more fruit. God is preparing you for your breakthrough. I want to encourage you today. Don't get in the way of God's potting and his planting. Because he's trying to fertilize your life right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. But you have to be willing to stay on that wheel. Mm. You have to be willing to allow God to continue to shape your life. You have to be willing to allow God to continue to work on you. None of us have made it. We won't make it until we get to the other side. That means that from birth to death, that God is still working on you. Mm -hmm. I encourage you today to allow God to shape you up. That's giving you life. That's sanctification. That's the process. Allow him to shape you up and then ship you out for ministry. Mm -hmm. That's the discipleship part. If you're on this call today and you've not allowed God to put his hands on you, it first starts with confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's what it starts with. If you have not done that, I encourage you to stay on the call afterwards. Contact me, text me, do whatever you need to do, and I will share the plan of salvation with you. We're not talking about membership right now. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about fellowship with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And once you receive him, then you will be able to be shaped up so God can ship you out. I want you to know that it was never God's intention for us to just stay in the four walls. But that's what we celebrate on Sundays. That's what we celebrate on Wednesday. God shapes us up that he can ship us out for the work of the ministry. Right. And I challenge you. I challenge you to be that type of person that moves from membership to discipleship. I want to tell you that I love you. God loves you. Uh, remember that we will be on this Wednesday night at 6.30. Please join us if you can this Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, also remember that beginning July the 21st, uh, our blood will be counted at the Mississippi Blood Services. If God lays up on your heart uh, to go by there, please go by the Mississippi Blood Service beginning July the 21st. If you have any questions, you can ask those mission members uh, exactly what you should be telling the blood service when you go that we may get credit. Uh, the code is DJ99. If you forget that, make sure you get with the mission. I think they want you to contact them anyway uh, to let them know that you have gone so we may get credit for our blood. Uh, also remember that on next Sunday, we will not be meeting Next Sunday, we will not be meeting and the following Wednesday, but we will return on that fourth Sunday for communion. I want to also remind everybody, and some of you may already know this, the, uh, the chat, uh, you're welcome to chat in the chat box. That is open. 
uh, I meant to tell you that a month or so ago that the chat is open if you want to chat in the chat box with your church mates during service or doing Bible study, you are welcome to do that. Uh, I want to thank all of those people who blessed us today, Pastor Charles Thurman, Sister Joyce Brewer, Deacon Robert Smith, Deacon Harvey Williams, uh, as well as Brother Reginald Black. It has been a blessing today. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, contact me if you need anything. Remember to encourage those young people and mature people to go register to vote. Uh, this fight is not over. We need to have people who better represent us uh, in Congress, in office. Uh, and again, make sure you're telling people who may have had some brushes with the law that they are not automatically excluded from registering to vote. There's a list called disenfranchised crimes, and we'll go over that in the future but it shows those crimes in which you don't qualify to vote, but there are some that you do qualify to register to vote. So just because they've had some brushes with the law does not necessarily exclude them from registering to vote. That's a common misconception. So let's make sure that we are communicating folks to register to vote. We're gonna also go over some voter registration ID guidelines uh, for those who don't have state ID or a license. Uh, I will show you ways that you can get state ID or use school IDs. We need to have all of that in tip-top shape. I love you. God bless you. We're going to close with a word of prayer, and then any, everybody can unmute themselves afterwards. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for yet another day's journey, and we're glad about it. We realize, oh God, that you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you, God, for being all that you are, not only for just who you are, God, but for what you've done in our lives in past times, right now and in the future. We pray right now, God, that you would forgive us for our sins, for we realize, oh God, that we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. And most of all, we pray that you would forgive those who have sinned against us, God. Now, God, we pray that you would continue to bind all of us together so close that one cannot fall for the other. We pray that you would just intervene in this COVID-19 situation. Protect us, God. Put a shield of protection around us. And for those who are experiencing illness right now, we pray that you would touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask that this week would be an awesome week, oh God a week in which we would go out and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord, if not with our mouth, God, with our actions. We love you, God. We bless you, God. And we cannot make it without you. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory, to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. God keep you. You may unmute yourselves and tell everybody hello. Hello.